Welcome back. We continue with this lecture, f uh, lecture three. We're going to introduce some of the change of a basis resolve. Basically, means if we, once we change the basics, um, what kind of things going to change? First, we're going to start with talking about given the assumption of the reduced cost lemma. Suppose that is zk minus zk. If xk is uh, entering the variable, zk minus zk is supposed to be the maximum of zj minus cj, who is greater than zero for all the non-basic column. All right, so this is how we choose the entering variable. And let the new column, k, after pivot, equals to yk equals to b inverse times ak. And <clears throat> that's it. The new right-hand side column, after the pivot, is the feasible basic solution equals to the b hat equals to b inverse times b. So I want you to remember these two yk, how the yk uh, columns are updated, how the <clears throat> right hand side are updated, because once ik can be calculated, zk minus ck, uh, zj minus cj can be recalculated as well. So these are the uh, formula we want you to kind of uh, remember. Uh, we're going to use quite a bit in the next uh, few lectures. <clears throat> so once we determine why k is positive, uh, uh, if we have at least one entry, uh, y k is positive, so let's take a look at this uh, simplex tableau again. And this is the entering uh, column, z k minus c k represent the largest positive value, and which is entering our case. Then we update yk uh, with uh, b inverse times ak. And this is represent our right-hand side column. The uh, right-hand side column in the row 0, z hat represent the current objective function value equal to cb transpose times b inverse times b. And also the current basic solution we refer as a b hat equals to b inverse times b, which is also this part. The uh, minimum ratio test determine which uh, variables to leave the basis. Okay, and minimum ratio test is calculated by with these column with all, some of the yik, some of the rows in the elements in yk are greater than zero. We can divide the right hand side by corresponding yik, and we choose the minimal one. For example, the minimum one is com coming out of, of uh, row R, so XR is the leaving variable. And rest of the basic variable updated by BI minus minimum ratio mm, <coughs> times YK. The R uh, rows of a, a basic variable and will take the value of zero. So this XJ are the rest of the basic variables, and xr is the leaving variable. So in the new iteration, xk prime equals to the, exactly the minimum ratio, and one of the basic variable we refer as xr prime equal to zero. In that case, leave the basis. The new objective function value can be calculated as well. The z prime is a new objective function value and the z hat is the current objective function value minus the zk minus ck times the minimum ratio. So with this, we can easily <coughs> determine the importances of this minimum ratio test. The minimum ratio actually will be the new value for the new entering basic variable. And also the objective function value change equals to the current objective function value minus zk minus ck, which is the uh, reduced cost, times the minimum ratio. Next conclusion from the reduced cost lemma, we recall z, uh, z, the objective function value, equals the c transpose times x equals the z hat, is the current objective function value, minus the summation of zj minus cj times xj, for xj are all non-basic uh, non variable. 
if we at least one entry in y, which is the k entering uh, column, b inverse times aj is positive, which uh, with every non-basic variable but xk set to zero. So therefore, we can put in this here, and we're going to know some of the xk going to come in to play in all the non-basic. So we rewrite just specifically for the xk because the rest of the uh, non-basic variables stay zero. So this part, majority not change, only one of them change in xk column. So the new <coughs> basic solution should be the current basic solution minus xk times b inverse times ak. And it's equivalent b inverse times ak equals to what? yk. So fairly easy we can calculate. So the current solution change will be the current basic solution minus xk times yk. So that's the first equation we want you to understand. This is the simplest form. We require actually b <coughs> hat minus xk times yk be non-negative because of the non-negativity constraint. So therefore xk times yk is between 0 to bi. This is what we call the second result. Okay, the first result uh, coming from the original constraint and the second result, second equation comes from the non-negativity constraint in the our linear program. If <coughs> yik less than or equal to zero and xk, uh, x prime k, which is entering uh, variables, is greater than or equal to zero, the second one is definitely hold because this part is positive, xk is currently zero, and later on taking a value of positive, and yk is negative, but the whole thing will be negative, whole thing will be negative, times a negative, it will be a positive. So therefore, b hat currently are, are all positive, or, or zero, and plus a positive number, and then it will always maintain is greater than or equal to zero. However, if one of the rk is greater than zero, and so this second equation may not hold for all value of yk. So xk prom, xk prom will be the new value of this non-basic variable will be equals to the minima ratio, okay? Minima ratio for some of the yik greater than zero. So the minima ratio equals br divided by yrk. R is the row, actually, the leading variable. Okay. Here we have, if we let xk currently equal to zero in equation one, x prom i equals the b, uh, bi hat minus the th minima ratio times yik. Okay. Uh, that's the case. <coughs> and xr, which is the leaving variable, will take a value of zero in that case. Okay. Hence, xk entering variable as a value of the uh, minima ratio. Entering basis xj will be equal to zero, leaving the basis, which is xr, basically which you maintain the uh, so-called basic feasible solution. What it means is we still maintain introducing one base, non-basic variable, set the value to the minima ratio, and one of the X, uh, current basic variable will take a value of zero. So we maintain M number of uh, non-zero uh, value in my next solution, and rest of the non-basic variable take the value of zero. Okay, again, remember the xk is entering, xr is... Okay, let's talk about this last slide. Uh, change of basis resolve for. When we're talking about xk is an entering variable, xr is a leaving variable. If in the co uh, column k, which is corresponding to the entering column, feasible uh, <coughs> yk is... Uh, la all the elements in yk are <coughs> less than or equal to less than or equal to zero and 
and feasible solution can be choose with an arbitrary small value and we explain why. Recall that the z prime, which is a new objective function value in the next iteration, equal to c transpose times x prime, and equals to the original objective current objective function value z hat minus the summation of z j times c j times x j, and x j's are all non basic column uh, variables. And this is according to the, re the result from the reduced co uh, cost lemma we talked about before in the last lecture per uh, period. If xk is less than or equal to zero, and then we can accept xk, all the other non basic variable we keep as zero, and we can replace xk into the uh, our constraint ax equal to b. And the new. <coughs> Uh, the xb currently the basic solution will be b inverse times b minus xk times yk, as we said it before. And XB, uh, b inverse times b is equals to v hat, which is the current basic solution minus xk times yk. If, and we know that b hat, b hat is currently non uh, non negative, which is zero or positive value. If y k, i k is less than or equal to zero for all the i and to, uh, from one to m, so for all the elements on that y column are less than or equal to zero, therefore this case we can <coughs> the x b will be b hat minus x k times y k. So x k currently is zero. We'll take a future value of positive, and y k's are negative. Okay, uh, or zero. So negative times a positive will be negative with this negative sign, and this term will be a, a positive sign. So there's no way I will <coughs> change the, one of the xb to be negative. So this value result at current uh, basic solution will be always uh, greater than or equal to zero. We're gonna, never going to. Uh, validate the non-negativity constraint for the original problems for any value of xk greater than zero. Also, we can see that since we choose x uh, <coughs> choose xk as entering, so assuming zk minus ck is positive, in this part xk currently take a value of zero. In the future, we will take a value of positive since it's entering. So positive times positive with this negative, so this term will be a negative. So the z prime always gonna be have better objective function value than z hat, which is the current objective function value. In that case, we can make a z prime as small as possible by increasing xk, xk, since this term is negative, and still maintain a feasible solution, which is from here. So therefore, this problem is unbounded many times. So uh, many times, we, if we look at the simplex tableau, and zk minus zk is the entering variable, is zk minus zk is greater than zero, and all the elements in the yk columns are either zero or negative, then we stop. We can call this problem is unbounded. We don't need to continue. So there's a uh, unbounded, uh, unbounded objective function value. We can look at this. The z hat is currently the <coughs> the current uh, objective function value with a negative times z k positive z k minus c k, and the slope always go down to the infinity. So that concludes this is the lecture three, and we will continue uh, to lecture four and giving you more example and how to convert these concepts uh, into revised simplex method.